Hey guys, welcome to the 60 second C sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the process class. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is this code right here and a button. Also, you're going to need to be using the system.diagnostics namespace because the process class is located in there. So under the if statement here, you're going to just come on and type out process. And the first method that I'm going to be showing you how to use is the start uh, method. And the start method will basically just start a process. So for example, if you wanted to open a program such as HXD, just like this, you could do that. We would use the start method to do that. And we're going to um, have it start whatever process that the user opens in the open file dialog. So as long as the user opens an executable file, then uh, we'll start the process of that or open it. So we're just going to do OFD.FileName so that it will start whatever process that the user opens in the open file dialog. So we so debug here, click this button, and once we click open, HXD should open or just show up on our screen. And yep, here's HXD. For some uh, programs, you do not have to type the path to the program. So for example, if we wanted to open notepad, we could just type notepad.exe right here. So now we debug and click button one, we should get a uh, notepad. Yep, and you don't have to type out the um, path to this file because it is located in the system32 folder. And you don't have to type out the path to any file inside of the system32 folder. So if we just type like exe up here, we search for an exe file, um, then we could open any one of these exes just by typing the file name. We don't have to type out the path to the file. So another file or another um, application that is inside of the um, system32 folder is cmd or command prompt. So we can just do cmd.exe and it would open up command prompt. Yep, here's command prompt. The next method that I'm going to be showing you how to use is the git um, current process. And the git current process will just return um, the process that you're currently working in. And we're working in this uh, YouTube uh, file or YouTube project right here. So we should just get um, YouTube as the name. So we're just going to do process uh, name and we're just going to display that in a message box so we can see um, what the current process name is. So now we debug here and click button one. You should just get a message box saying youtube.vcs host. Yep, youtube.vs host. Because that is the name of this process. So if we were to go into task manager right here, we should see uh, youtube.vs host somewhere in here. We got a name. Yeah, there you go. YouTube.vs. And another method that I'm going to be showing you how to use, or actually the last method I'm going to be showing you how to use, is the kill method. And the kill method will basically just kill the process or end the process. So we just do .kill, and it will just kill this process right here. So as soon as we um, uh, click this button, it will just kill this process because it gets the current process and then it kills it. So we're just killing this process right here. Yep, just killed it. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to be getting into a little bit more of the process class, and we're going to be looking at this kill method and using it a little bit differently. So see you guys.